Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to adjust an image for black and white in 10 easy steps. I'll have these 10 steps listed in the description below this video so you don't have to worry about writing them down while you're watching the video. Now, I'm assuming you're working on an unprocessed color image that is cropped the way you want it to be. We're going to start out with step number one, tone. We're gonna to go to the basic tab, and when I'm talking about tone, I'm mainly talking about these four sliders, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Now, of course, if your image is over or underexposed, move the exposure slider first to get it so it looks like it's properly exposed. Then come in and adjust the highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. In this image, I'm going to take highlights down, shadows up, and I'm going to hold in the Option key on my Mac. It's Alt key on a PC to get a white point. Click on whites, I'll get that black screen. Push this up until I see colors coming through. And when I do, that means I'm clipping those channels. I'm just going to back it off until that just about disappears. Next, we're going to get a black point, same way, hold in that option key on my Mac, Alt key on a PC, click on blacks and move that to left. And I like to black, uh, clip the shadows a little bit, so we'll do that. And there, we just adjusted those four sliders and now we have this color image. Step two, pick a profile. You get a profile from the profile browser. In the basic tab, you'll see where it says profile. You have these four squares. Click on those and then go down to B and W. You can see there's 17 different black and white profiles. Just hover over them and you'll get a preview of that profile. Just keep going till you find one that suits your fancy. Kind of like 05. That's um, kind of like 05. Let's go with uh, 05. All right, so we'll take that. Now, once you pick a profile, you could um, affect the intensity of that profile with this amount slider up here. So in this case, if I move it to the right, you see I'm making it a little more dramatic. If I move it to the left, I'm making it less dramatic. I kind of liked it right in the middle at 100. So I'm done with that. Step number two, profile. Step number three, noise reduction. Uh, this image was shot at pretty low ISO, but if I go to the detail tab, I could tweak up noise reduction a little bit. Not much to do here, it's fine. But that is step number three, noise reduction. Step number four, white balance. Now you may be wondering, it's a black and white image, why do you have to adjust white balance? Well, if I go to the basic tab, if you move these two sliders, you'll see that they do affect the tones in the black and white image. The temp slider is going to affect it more like a brightness control. So to the right, it's brighter, to the left, it's darker. The tint control is a little different though. It'll affect different parts of the image, different tones of the image. So if I move it to the right, you can see how it's kind of affecting different things as we move it around. So just kind of move those around until you get them to make it look like you would like the way you want it to look. So that was step number four, white balance. Step number five, black and white mix. This is where we affect the individual tones a little more directly. For example, we know that the grass here is green, might have a little yellow in it as well. If I go to the green slider inside of the black and white mix and move it to the right, I'm making anything that was green in the color image brighter. If I move it to the left, I'm making anything that was green darker. So just move these sliders around to try to get the look you want to have for your image. And you can just you know slide them around. If you want to put them back in their default position, just double click right on them. And you can see this affecting the signs on the land red affecting the signs a little bit as well green and yellows we did aqua is probably going to de do the water mainly and it does Let me make that a little darker blue a lot of this image was blue yes yeah, so you could see it's affecting a lot of the image I'll bring that down a little bit purple anything purple in there i don't see much magenta not much magenta so do the black and white mix that is step number five Step number six is presence. Up here in the basic tab, there are three sliders for presence, texture, clarity, and dehaze. Do these next. In this case, I'm gonna add a little texture 
and add some clarity as well. All right, that was step number six. Step number seven, calibration. Go down to the calibration tab. These sliders, similar to what the tint slider did, they'll affect different parts of the image as you move them around. For example, if I go like to saturation green, and I move that to the right, you can see how it's kind of affecting different parts of the image. So what I typically do is I start at the very top and just move things around, see what they do. Same thing with the red primary hue slider. I'll move that around. Kind of move things here, there, everywhere. See what happens. This is affecting the grass and the, the you know, little bushes and stuff. There. It's affecting the water a little more there. So move those around to get the look you want. I kind of like that. So that was step number seven, calibration. Step number eight, local adjustments. So if you have sensor spots, get rid of those now. If you want to do any masking, do that now. I don't think this image needs any masking done, but if I wanted to like adjust the sky independently of everything else, I would do select sky. If I want to adjust the lighthouse, I do select subject and so on. But I don't think this image needs it, but this is step eight, local adjustments. Step nine, sharpening. So we're going to go to the detail tab and we can go to the sharpening slider and sharpen the image. I like to zoom in on something that I like detail in. So I'll go down here where I could see the, this is the year this lighthouse was built, 1833. Go to that sharpening slider. Just make it sharp. And that was step number nine. Step number 10 is effects. Do you want to put a little vignette on it? Do you want to add grain to it? Anything like that you could do with step number 10. And that is the final step. So that is how you should go about adjusting an image for black and white in 10 easy steps. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>